And I'm going to tell you a short story. And the story is about the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, or the UNFCCC. Article 6 of the UNFCCC is on the issue of public information, dissemination, education, and capacity building. And it's a very uncontroversial article of the UN triple, uh, FCCC. And in the negotiations, uh, the negotiators who follow Article 6, usually the developed country negotiators, they send their junior most negotiators there because there's nothing controversial happening there. It's an ap apple, apple pie and motherhood issue. Everybody proves of public education, dissemination, and, public, and capacity building. So usually it's a very uncontroversial track of the negotiations. But unusually, just before the Paris uh, negotiations, the 21st Conference of Parties in Paris in 2015, it became slightly controversial. And the reason for the controversy was the fact that all the capacity building that was being done until then was being done primarily by developed countries funding consultants from developed countries to fly into developing countries for a few days, run a few workshops, fly out, and tick the box on capacity building. And in the developing countries, particularly the least developed countries, there was a very strong feeling that this was not enough. We need to be investing in long-term capacity at the national level, and this fly-in, fly-out, consultant-driven uh, exercise was not enough and not sufficient. And in fact, um, one of the uh, research institutions, ODI, track the numbers of how much money has been spent on this, and it's in the region of $300 million has been spent on so-called capacity building entirely spent on consultants from developed countries to come into developing countries and run workshops. So in the Paris negotiations, this particular issue for once became controversial with the developing countries, particularly the least developed countries, arguing that we needed a centralized UNFCC-driven uh, long-term capacity building uh, program and not just leave it to the developed countries to run it the way they like, which they have been done, doing until then. The result of this was that in the Paris Agreement, we have now a new article. It's Article 11 of the Paris Agreement on capacity building. It's a new article, doesn't, didn't exist before. And it says that the emphasis now needs to be on building national capacity building systems that are sustainable over time, as the Paris Agreement timeline is to 2030, we need to be investing in national institutions. And one of the neglected national institutions that we all have are universities. As I said earlier, the $300 million that has been spent on capacity building, almost zero went to universities. Most of it went to consultants. All right? So universities already exist. They may not have the capacity now, but they can be invested in to develop their capacity. So, Coming out of the Paris Agreement, under the leadership of the uh, LDC chair, I took an initiative to contact a number of other least developed country friends and universities, primarily the Mukri um, Makarere University Center. We agreed to collaborate to jointly form this consortium. We are going, the, the initial consortium is 10 universities in 10 least developed countries, and we are using a hub and spoke approach for each of us to then engage with others in our region so that we cover all 48 LDCs. There are 48 least developed countries and the instruction from the chair was that we have to include everybody. We cannot exclude anyone. But on the other hand, we cannot do all 48 at the same time. So we start with 10 as a core group and then the 10 will reach out to the others and we will cover all 48. And the objective of the entire exercise is a South-South initiative driven by the least developed countries group in which we will empower and enable universities to be doing capacity building for the long term and make their countries able to tackle the impacts of climate change. And one of the focus areas for us, because we're vulnerable countries, is obviously adaptation. And then within adaptation, one of the focus areas is community-based adaptation, working with the most vulnerable. And hence the CBA conference is one of the most relevant for us, and hopefully we will continue to be engaged with future CBA conferences from the LAC initiative. Colleagues and friends, when it comes to capacity building, uh, I think universities are certainly the best placed institutions to do that. We have, I think, about 40 universities in Uganda, a few government or public, but many private. Uh, so we will bear the torch and uh, we will ensure that uh, 
all the other universities know what is going on with this initiative. Capacity building is a critical. Uh, if you look at uh, many of the countries that have worked, I think a good number, a significant number of those that I know have uh, uh, prioritized capacity building. So I think we are just on the right, the right footing. We will expose the young and the old, the young going to primary and secondary schools. We will use the opportunity to create uh, the information and the required training materials so that we can go through our level. Uh, lower levels of education and uh, really sensitize and inform uh, those upcoming scholars, upcoming researchers about uh, climate change, its causes, impacts, and uh, what we can do to uh, mitigate uh, what, is, uh, what is happening. We will also engage uh, in research and innovations, and uh, that's basically why Google uh, was created. Uh, so that uh, uh, we can put information to policy makers and also increase the body of knowledge about climate change. Uh, we are focusing on adaptation, but uh, where mitigation also becomes important, I think we we'll also try to make contribution. As the chair of the LDC group in the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, I've been trying all my best to move the group from a victim's narrative into a, pro a proactive uh, champion on climate change. One of the most important aspects of becoming champions for tackling the impacts of climate change in the LDC, in the LDC is the need to move first in the long-term capacity building at the national level in every LDC country. During the negotiations of the 21st conference, which is COP21, which was held in Paris in 2015, the LDC group argued for, argued for and achieved the inclusion of a new article, which is now Article 11 in the Paris Agreement, on the importance of investing in long-term capacity building at the country level in every country in the order to tackle the impacts of climate change effectively around the world. We also feel that it's very important set for institutions at the national level are uh, universities which, are, which has a role to build the capacity of the future leaders at every country. So far, there has been very little investment in enhancing the capacity of universities to, in turn, build the capacity of the people of each country. It's therefore an important development for the least developed countries that the lack initiative has been developed as an LDC-specific South-South University initiative focusing on adaptation as well as other climate change related topics. Let me conclude by saying that although this is an ldc -led initiative, we are very open to collaborate in order to collaborate with non-LDC LDCs both from the South as well as from the north, as we believe that knowledge sharing is a two-way street in which we can all learn from each other. I thank you all.